Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing today? So, let's see here. What do we got? Let me see who we have. I know we have Vincent on. Thank you so much for joining us. They have, like, all these new little note thingies here on Facebook, which sucks. Oh, and we got a bunch of people over in the Tabletop Backer Party. Thanks for joining us, guys. Super exciting. So, today we're going to be talking about Crave, Fuji Koro. We're going to be talking about Life Siphon and Exodus Chronicles. Hey, like what's going on, Preston and it seems Alan? Like everyone's actually eating right now. While I know. This. Well, this is like the lunchtime thing. You oh. sit here, you eat your lunch, and you get to talk about Kickstarter. <laughs> like, that's what you do. I had a bit of curry <laughs> right before. I was hey, like, Christine. Oh, no. I know, right? I just ate lunch, too. Like, you quickly you down your lunch really quick, and then you talk about Kickstarters with like us, I right? You a Pop Tart during the show, right? Like, that wouldn't be too distracting. As soon as we get on the little tiny screen, like, yeah, that's Pop not tart. distracting. Just like, yeah, nobody pays tart. attention to yeah. us on the tiny screen. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> And, of course, guys, make sure to give lots of comments and stuff like that. Join in on the conversation. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, we also have Arizona Game Fair this weekend, which, which we're going like to be at. tonight. Yeah. Hi, Ma hi like Magenta it, you make it, and you make it sound like it's really far out. You're like, well, we have Arizona Game Fair coming up. In, guys. It's actually active now. Guys, I met Vital Lacerda last night. Super chill, dude. Like, just super nice. We talked about how uh, he does, he's also really bad at dice rolling. If you want to beat Vital Lacerda in a game, play a dice rolling game, Dice ba Throne. Barbarians or something. Right, yeah, okay, that's how you do it, right there. I'm giving you guys tips for the future, okay? <laughs> dice Throne, that, Dice Throne would be a good one to beat him in, too. All right, let's see here. Let's see what we have up first. All my things are mixed up here. 3 p.m. here, so lunch is a bit ago. Well, Christine, you can go ahead and have a snack, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I know Vincent's probably having his dinner. <laughs> or maybe breakfast. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to check out the time. So first up, we have Crave. This is by Black Forest Studio. This is for two-plus players, and it's going to last about 25 minutes. And it does scale up with how many minutes it's going to last via how many players and stuff, obviously. But... So I was looking at this Kickstarter, and the first thing that drew me to this one is, like, the art in it. All right, Dr. Glory Hog. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat chips on camera. It'd be too loud. So crunchy. So Yeah, no, the art looks really good. The art is so freaking amazing looking. Yeah, Preston, no Greg today. He's, like, working, yeah, he has like, this, a job. Yeah, they you give know, him money like, to do work, and sometimes they want yeah. him to do work for extra money. It's weird. I don't get it. Dice Throne is super good. If you guys haven't played it, you should play that. Yeah, Season 3 Dice mm -hmm. Throne is just amazing, oh. and Season 3 should be out. I can't Not wait to long. see it. I can't wait to that see it. That one's going to be more like a dungeon mm -hmm. crawl. So in this one here, it is a card drafting game. And I think that's a really interesting part of this card drafting game here. Look at that centaur. Is the fact that you're not only drafting cards from your own sort of deck area, but you're also drafting from like a marketplace area. Yeah. And I thought that was like it puts a nice little spin on card drafting games because usually it's just that one thing. And, okay, you're picking stuff from the middle and hopefully it'll get refreshed and stuff. But this one, like... I have special cards that are just mine. Or you get in that mechanic where you're just drafting your own deck, but having both is just, like, nice, I think. Right. No, I agree. I like that the fact that it's a somewhat asymmetrical because the vampires play differently than the hunters do. Well, yeah, and I think that's really good, too. And then you're going to have, like, different people that you can get on your team and stuff, right? Right, yeah. You've got, like, kind of like the mystical forces or I guess the enchanted forces, which are going to be, like, your unicorn peeps. Preston's like, what is this work that you speak of? I don't know, Preston. I try not to do any of it. <laughs> but I, 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 it does look very interesting as far as I like deck builders in general. So, I mean, and then any game you can get for 20 bucks, I'm usually all in on. Right. 20 bucks, two player. If you want to go four player, it's 40 bucks. It's basically every deck you buy, you can fit another two players. In. I was going to say, yeah, and you play like teams, yeah, right? You can, you yeah. Play, I think they even recommend getting three to play up to three versus three. And you right. have three vampire players and three, you know, hunter players and stuff. I don't know how much fun it would be at that big count, but I think this is one that I'm going to get for 20 I could probably convince Greg to get one at 20, and so then, like, we could play it, the two of us, or when we get together with other people, if Greg's there, we can, like, steal his copy, too, and like, play four. What they put into the art and then, like, the naming and stuff of this, like, first off, I was saying before in our Instagram, like, pre-show thing, it reminds me of, like, a colorful Vampire the Masquerade, like, 80s style sort of thing where, like, you just have, like, these really cool, interesting-looking characters on each card. And that is not always easy to create whenever you're doing yeah, that, you know? Yeah, it's a lot of art know? to do when you've got a bunch of cards. Yeah, like... I'd have a bunch of stick figures. <laughs> 
This one's a boy. <laughs> Not everybody needs to know about <laughs> how you how you make yeah, your it's art. Pretty bad. <laughs> My art's bad. Do not the art. Oh, that's very sweet, Vincent. Thank you. Um, and I'm not usually like a huge person for deck builders because I usually think that they get boring pretty fast. But I think that being able to play the two different factions. But this Claude Beauty loves vampires. Look <laughs> at her. Look at her. I just Look got my nails claws. done, guys. They're badass. She <laughs> likes vampires. <laughs> it all started with interviews with oh, vampires. Oh, which also, by the way, guys, I went back and watched last week's thing. Oh, hey, Stephanie, how are you doing? And why didn't you guys tell me that my hair was all jacked up the entire time I was recording? That's like your guys' job to tell me if my hair is like this the entire time I'm recording, guys. Okay? So thanks for that, guys. Wow. <laughs> I think that although I'm not a huge fan of deck builders, that I'm like 100% in on this one because of the theme, because of the art, because Asymmetrical of the... Asymmetrical decks. That ace, you start yeah, off and the intricacy Plus that they put in a, this. you get to shove like these poisonous plants into other people's decks, which is interesting. Right? Like I, I can like imagine like you have drafting like, this like wolf's blood. Really wolf's interesting mechanic with that. Like... And then getting it in your deck so that you're drawing it instead. That seems pretty interesting. And yeah, any game you can pick up for 20 bucks... It's very World of Darkness, though, guys, because you have vampires, vampire hunters, werewolves, and then you have, like, your groupies, and then your enchanted. Which like, I'm I to love what that. The different enchanted people are. Because they're very unique. I think some of the enchanted people will do stuff on to both sides, too. Yeah, well, yeah, like absolutely. Both sides. Gosh, like, it's one of those things. I, I looked at this, and I'm like, I'm not going to like this. And then I started actually looking, and I'm like, dang it, I really like this. Dang it. 20 bucks. Dang it. Al at least it's $20. Like, but I feel like you need at least two copies. If you're going to play four-player. You, yeah, because <coughs> if you want to play four-player, you have to have at least two copies worth of it. So, like, yeah. that's, that's I think, the only drawback, you know. I guess if you're playing a lot of two-player games but and stuff like that. But we did that recently with Terrors in London, too. <laughs> it was It's two-player to start off with, and then if you buy, you can <gasps> buy up to four players or more. Right. So it's the same type of thing. I like that it's very, very – Intro price is 20 bucks. You can just get into it for 20 bucks, and then if you like it, you can always get another copy. At a Everybody in the comments, what do you guys think? Do you think that... Uh, yeah, is her hair okay today? Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> well, thank you. We need Magenta's like, I thought that was her hairstyle. Well, sometimes. In the morning, maybe. <laughs> so everybody in the comments, are you guys going to back this game? Because, I, well, do you think that Greg would back this game first? Because, yes. like, oh, Greg you would think back Greg this? would back this? 20 bucks. That's his wheelhouse. He loves $20 games. He loves deck builders. He loves deck builders. That's true. And, and he was super on games. for like the Towers of London Terrors and stuff. Of London. Or even Terrors though, of even London, though yeah. Even though we went Deluxe and we got the four-player version, he still got right. a copy of it himself, the two-player version. <laughs> he plays <laughs> Dominion all the time. Oh, Alan, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, let's watch Glory Hands yeah, slowly justify $60. To. Every but stream, every stream, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Greg would totally back this because he's all about Shards of, of Infinity. He loves right. Tyrants of Underdark. He plays Dominion all the time. Yeah. And he loves drafting games like Treasure Hunter. He loves Seven Wonders. Which he loves all those drafting and deck building games. If you guys have not played Shards of Clank. Infinity, that's another card drafting game that I actually like quite a bit. And it, it just doesn't get boring, you know? That one's a really good one, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think I'm 100% in with this. So the art is great, uh, but I'm not into deck building. Yeah, I'd probably play it if one of your friends bought it. Yeah, that's, I mean, with, with the deck builders, it's hard. It's either, like, they're good or, like, they're just kind of boring because you get the same stuff all the time, you know? Right, like, because we have, like, Ascension, which <laughs> we enjoyed for a little while, but it didn't take very long before you kind of knew, like, okay, these are all the yeah. cards that are in here. Now there's been a bazillion, a bazillion additions made for Ascension. Where well, added more yeah, and more and more and more. that's different. But All right, let's get on Let's get on to Fujikoro. I really want to talk about that one because this one's really cool looking. Okay, so this Fujikoro is by Game Brewer. This is for one to six players. It's going to be about 30 minutes per player, right, on that? And mm -hmm. it costs $111. So it is a pricey game. But, guys... This game but guys. looks really interesting. So but guys, that's going to be my next YouTube name. <laughs> but guys. Sorry. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to get the sort of social crowd <laughs> you want for that. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work out too well for you. <laughs> so with this one here, guys, this reminds me of like a 3D clank, except like with like a, a different theme to it, you know? Because you're going into the volcano, you're trying to find these temples, 
and get stuff. And then you're trying to get the heck out of there like as fast as possible, you know? So you have like this modular board system that you're using. And then not only that, when you're building these things, you're collecting items on this modular board system to build all these different things to like protect yourself and stuff. But it looks like building these things here is like the Euro style portion of the game yeah. where like Getting you're trying to collect to them the special and then and you're whatnot. trying to do the placement on them and stuff, which is so cool. Like See, that's the part I don't like. It's like you're playing two different games, right? Right. But that's what I don't like, though, is that, you know, if I'm going to play an Ameritrash kind of clankish style game, I want it just to be you 100% You just want it to be 100% Ameritrash. Without some weird, okay. like, asymmetrical or without some weird, like, I'm drafting cubes, but cubes on a board, like, that doesn't exactly seem like it really? fits for me. It's Right, but Preston? It, I'm telling you, you it seems like 3D Clank, right? Because that's that's what you're doing in Clank. You're running down there as fast as you can, and then you're trying to get your stuff and get the heck out. It's like the same sort of thing, except you have a modular board system and then, like, Euro mechanics, right? I don't know. And I like the theme, too, where you're running in there and then there's, like, a dragon or volcano and stuff in there and, like... Here's the big problem we have. Okay. Or when I say we, I have now. Okay. Ever since Tainted Grail... Yeah. I've been tainted. If I see a game that costs $100 and it's not, if I'm not as excited about it as Tainted Grail, <laughs> then I'm just like, 100 bucks. I could have bought You play the compare Grail. game. You can't compare I, I do all of those. I look at that and I go, man, I could have gotten all that for $100 and instead this is 111 Now, to be fair, though, this does come with a lot of deluxe components yeah. that you wouldn't get at retail. So that's right. pretty cool. But this one is 100% for me. Look I'd at those dragons, guys. Look at the dragons. We have gigantic cool mini or not dragons from Arcadia Quest. They're like that tall. Like yeah, but those are mini dragons. <laughs> pay more for less. <laughs> Hold on, though. Buy five, get five for free. What is the little Buy five, get five. portions here? So you have like clip-on things that go inside of them for like health or something? What is that portion of it? Yeah, Ellen's like... That's when you play the dude, but guys, has a different context, but won't play well in hashtags. You can't make a hashtag out of that. It's not going to go well. Hashtag but guys. Yeah. Hmm. But guys, no. Mm. But guys. <laughs> be good license plate. So, okay, the retail edition on this is going to be less expensive. It is pricey. You're correct, Magenta. I do feel like it is pricey. There's a ton of exclusives in it, though. Yeah. Or at least the deluxe version. It's it not. Because it comes with all the, mini or the miniatures. Yeah. It's I don't think the other one will. It's not like it's pricey overpriced. It's pricey because it has, like, miniatures in it. It has a lot of cardboard in it. You're getting, like, a cardboard board also with modular tiles and then... I'll scroll down to it. You're actually building up You're the actual lot. little... Uh, sanctuaries in there like they're 3d right. sanctuaries guys it's not like a thing that you just throw on there but i'm, I'm you get to that and kind of player point boards where which these deluxe games whenever it's like deluxe is like double the amount of like the original game or like 40 or 50 or 60 bucks more than the normal game i have to look at it and go am i gonna like it enough to justify going to the deluxe and with this one if you're not going deluxe why are you even backing it i need to double check i think the player boards might be like the inlaid cardboard thing you know on these too so like they're doing a bunch of different stuff for this i feel like the deluxe would be the really fun way to go though you know no i agree but 111 dollars i'm less excited about uh, it looks so good guys oh my goodness this is one like i said i'm not against it but i would definitely want to actually play this one first to see if, well, if the idea of a euro game slash you know this volcano race game kind of all goes together well or if it just feels like i'm doing this weird thing over okay. here while i'm trying to do something cool over here alan does make a good point guys that everybody should be aware of is that the deluxe comes out later than the retail which is important you know you're gonna have to wait longer for your game if you get the deluxe copy it it makes sense because they're providing so much more in there so like that's understandable but still if that's a deciding factor for you guys like, that's really important to know. Thank you so much for bringing that up, Alan. Like, got to go deluxe or stay home. That's how I feel, right? <laughs> no, I agree. If you're not going deluxe on this one, then there's almost no reason to kickstart it. But and I also don't want to go deluxe on this one. <laughs> Magenta also says that it plays, like, up to six. So how long would six take? How would... It was 30 minutes per player. Three hours. No. Do you want a three-hour tour? Yeah, that's you just don't play with minutes. six people. I don't know. <laughs> Even four people is two hours. You know, you can get done in two hours. You could almost watch all of the new Avengers movie. 
I think that thing's like three it hours. It looks so good. Long. Yeah, see these little lowered strength, the six dragon tiles with lowered strength, those actually fit in the dragons and stuff. They thought of a bunch of really cool things in this game. Man. And they are the people that just got done with Gugong. That's, that is true. That is true, yeah. But I haven't played Gugong, and if I'm saying that even uh, Gugong close to right. is supposed to be a really good game. We almost got to play that at the last uh, convention we went to, but we ended up having to play a bunch of Kickstarters. So we sadly, we got to like watch some of it, but yeah. we didn't actually get to play it, play it. But I've heard only good things about Gugon, you know? But I don't know. I'm just not 100% sold on this one. There's nothing okay. about this one that makes me feel like that I have to get this now or else. Look at these freaking sacred temples, guys. Look hey, at these. Hey, calm down. I'm so excited about this game. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Listen, this is no wingspan, okay? <laughs> you don't know? You add birds to this and maybe you I don't know. It. Oh, whatever. You are so <laughs> against birds. <laughs> I'm not against birds. Gosh. All right, guys. So I personally am 100% in on this. Like, I really like it. I think you're getting a really great bang for your buck. I love the deluxe edition on here. Like, I love what you can get from that. It. They took so much detail going through here. Yeah, Vincent's like, I sense a pitch here from Glory Hound, Always. right? <laughs> um, if this interests you, I think this is the way to go. Like, you yeah, should get it on you, Kickstarter for sure. If you were looking sure. for a hybrid game like this, I think this is definitely something that's look worth looking into. I just, I'm not yeah. looking for this hybrid game. This game is not the game I'm looking for right now. This is not the game you are looking for. This is the game I'm looking for, guys. No, it's not. This is the game I'm looking for right now. Not. I love modular board systems I because love modular board systems. well because then the game never gets boring and clank you know she it takes like it takes like one play and then you're like all right I know the best route to get down here like so she uses a really bad example there because she says oh like clank and it doesn't have we have three expansions of clank we haven't played yet how dare you sir how dare you bring that up <laughs> on blast oh it's so boring that's the because same clank board. is your game that's your style of game you just talked about how this is clank you know? in 3d and how you love because i so want much. i want clank in 3d like with modular boards that's different so i can play them differently as opposed to clank in like 3d printer we'll in print in 2d, in 3D. that has one single board that I figure out in one play. Like but it doesn't have one single board. It's got the front board, the back board. There's the sunken treasures boards. There's the I'm miners just saying. board with the spiders. Just saying that we have. I'm j I'm literally All right. just saying. Doctor Glory Hog, board. would you would you back this? No, I, I'm gonna pass on this one just because you've I been overruled. <laughs> I think it's a good a good price for this type of game. It's just not the game I'm looking for right now. So well, is that what I'm interested? I'll have to use my Jedi tricks on you later. I could get Spear Island and Dinosaur Island. Uh, Boom. All right, moving on, guys. We have Life Siphon. Let's scroll down here. So Life Siphon is by Lay Waste Games. This is for two to four players. It's going to last 20 to 40 minutes on this. This is made by the same people who did Dragoon. Dragoon? And With Dragoon, cool metal yeah, Dragoon had some deluxe. serious, crazy deluxe metal upgrades and stuff like this that. This too. Like... This one has crazy metal. Yeah, the upgrades in this are serious. However, the whole premise of this game, you know, I don't even know why we're watching this video because it doesn't have any game stuff in it. It's just like a story. Yeah. The whole premise so of this game. So what type of game would you call this game? It's that's a, a good game. question. It's a dueling game. It's a dueling game for four players. So you're dueling the person Two to four players. Yeah. left of you. While the person to the right of you attacks you. Right, which is like... It's a weird Odd. game of playing rock, paper, scissors. Odd, right? Because you're trying to, like, damage the person. So you're, you're using your life to summon these things to damage the person to the left of you while the guy to the right of you is also trying to kill you. And you win by, like, having that person to the right of you die, I believe. Yeah. It's like how you win. So, so this is 100% up my alley as far as it being a dueling game. The issue I have with this, and this is coming off of a recent play of a three-player. Um, I played a three-player dice throne. And it was like we we were doing this. We oh like, yeah, that's I'm true. I'm attacking to the left, and then you attack right. this yeah, way, we, we and did like, that, and it ended up just being not fun because there was no there's no dynamic there where you're like, hey, we should we should gang up on this. Like when you play Shards right. of Infinity, you're like, hey, we should gang up on this guy, and you could do this in Dice Storm, by the way. I didn't though. We did little house rules, but you'd be like, hey, this guy's getting too strong. We should take him out. He's got the most life, and you can kind of get that interplay between this. With this one, you're just solely like, I attack left, they attack right. It goes in a big circle, and you're like. Trying to stay alive while also trying to kill – so the, the fun of it is trying to stay alive while also hurting yourself to kill the person to the left of you. Right. While not letting the person to the right of you get you. And so I've, I've seen some gameplay of this. 
You have to really want to play that balancing game, though. Ellen says, I can't play this game. It gets way too much into people's heads. Creepy. <laughs> like, I'm... <sighs> I love all the components in this. They have some seriously awesome components and stuff, but I am super not excited about the gameplay in this because I feel like it's just unbalanced. Like you said with the Game of Thrones, or the uh, Dice Throne thing. Because Dice Throne, it's good at two, it's good at four. I don't like it at three. Three is okay, yeah, but you, you really are just... It's just a little unbalanced, you know? It's not as much fun when you try to set up something. Like you're like, oh, I'm going to get myself a right. shield, or oh, I'm going to debuff this person and then they end and it then you end up having to attack like the wrong person you're like cool now this person that already has poison got poisoned again so nothing happens where in real life you'd be like i'm gonna poison both of them i really liked how to work together to take somebody down and all that kind of interplay between the characters i liked what they tried to do here but i think that if they would have just made it like a two-player dueling game that would have been better well, this or one, something. I don't know. They need to change. Just, this one with three is fine because you can definitely play at three. I think this one is meant to go that way because they want you to go left while someone from the right attacks you. I just don't know if that is some, what I want in a dueling game. I like that kind of mm. shifting alliances where you're like, oh, man, we got to take out Greg. You know, he's really powerful. Or, oh, did you see all those shields he just drafted? Or, oh, man, if you look over there, our daughter's got the most gems. We need to take her out. Or you guys going, oh, we need to kill Dr. Gorehog. He's got all this attack whenever he plays his turn. He could wipe one of us out in a turn. If we both attack him, he'll be so weak he'll have to heal himself before so he can attack somebody else. So Magenta Lizard says Can't that Dice that. Throne has a bonus for attacking the yeah, leader, there, though. There's multiple ways of playing Dice Throne. Like I okay, said, it was okay. a, your house ruling it where we thought, oh, we'll just do it very easily where, like, I attack to the left, Alex attacks to the left, Andrew attacks to the left. Wait, like, that's you, you told me that's the way Dice Throne went. No, when we played it with you Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think she listens to me. I guys. thought that's exactly how it was supposed to be played. That was disappointing. No, in three-player, the way you're supposed to do is you roll a die, and if it's like it goes either left or to the right based off of that. Oh, my gosh. Why is my Discord coming up, guys? Discord's just going to update real quick. I know. It's go. fine, guys. It's fine, guys. What's, what's next, Steam? I don't know. I don't like, know if you guys use Steam, but it likes to – every like every time I turn on my computer, it's like, hold on. Let me update Steam. I'm like, no, yeah. stop. Calm down i can't see anything there we go okay so with you know with dice stone though you roll it you're supposed to roll a die to see if you go left or right with it with your attack but even right. that can kind of send you the wrong way like i might attack somebody who's got a bunch of defense when i'd rather All right, well let's attack talk about else. this game and not dice throw but no. i mean i understand that it has some of the same mechanics okay so yeah i watched that too alan this has a bunch of amazing components in it, but I am just not sold on the gameplay. And that's sad for me because, like, I love games that have a bunch of amazing components in it. And, by the way, Wormwood here, guys, if you want these things here. It's another tier. Well, no, I'm saying if they want those things there, like, just from Wormwood, they're doing their own campaign right now, guys. So, like, if you like those things, like, yeah. Wormwood is doing a different campaign, so, like, if you want a different symbol or something on them, you, and that's what's, like, luring you to this, like, just go over to Wormwood because, like, they have a thing going on right now. Because um, these things right here, guys, are, like, just badass right here. The game okay? seems, <laughs> I think the game seems balanced enough, like, watching gameplay of it. It seems balanced enough. I just don't think it seems fun for me. Like, the part yeah. I like about the dueling game is the hey, shifting Kabuki alliances. Kid. And there is no shifting alliance factor in this. Yeah. I was... Honestly, I was kind of sad because I was excited about this game, and I was like, oh, this kind of sounds interesting. And then when I actually looked at the gameplay, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not as excited about this game. So if I end up playing this game, like, somewhere at a convention, I will let you guys know and stuff and how it worked out and ha what I think of it and everything. But as of right now, I'm not going to probably do this. I can't yeah. even look at that Wormwood campaign. Ellen, I'm telling you, it's I got like – you know, like, like I was like, a baby. you, you go what ahead you and you right get there? on the Wormwood thing and you're like, all right, oh, only $20. And then it's like, no, that's just to like For one. get a space in here yeah, to pay like more money or here's something. one basic disc. It's made out of yeah. plywood and no, it's not yeah. made out of plywood, but they're like, it's $20 per little tray. You're like, cool. So if I want to outfit my table with four, I'm going to spend like a hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say I'm not going to back this. Like. It ha it has amazing components. The thing that I would love to back in this is probably like the little wormwood pieces because I like the symbols on them. Those look mm -hmm. badass. You know, they look like the eye from uh, the eye of Sauron. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it looks like. <laughs> All right. So moving on, we have Exodus Chronicles. Well, do we want to? Um, so I'm also a, a non-back. Yeah. I think Greg would definitely be a non-back. Yeah, also. Greg would definitely be a non-back. I don't know how Greg would feel about Fujikoro. 
He'd probably have to play it before he buys yeah, it. Yeah, for 100 bucks. <laughs> He'd play bucks, before he buys yeah. it. <laughs> for 100 bucks, he definitely would have to play it first. All right. Next up, we have Exodus Chronicles. This is by NSKN Games. Or they have, like, it's like boards and dice or something like that. I think they changed their stuff um, to boards and dice. So if you're looking them up on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that, they've changed that just by the way. This is for one to six players. It's going to be 30 minutes per player on this. So again, long play times and stuff like that. This is a 4X game. I can never remember the 4Xs. It's exploit, exploit explore, explore, exterminate. I always want to say expose for some reason. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, it's exterminate and then it's um, expand. And then my next one I always want to say is exhume. So I don't You're know. I don't know corpses. why. They, those are just like the EX words that come to mind. Exfoliate. Make an example of. I don't know. E that's right. Extrapolate. I mean, I, I don't know why I can never remember them. <laughs> Exylophone. No, that's not a word. <gasps> yeah, we're going to go to Arizona Game Fair later today, guys. So. Yeah. Oh, so Alan's talking about. He was asking earlier about oh, yeah, good okay. 4X games. And one of the ones that has the most. Seems like just solid overall reviews. It would be Heroes of Land, Aaron Scene. We played it, but we played it a long time ago in prototype form, like two years ago. Um, but Heroes of Land, Aaron Scene is a really great 4X game. Well, and then like a Twilight Imperium sort of thing. And then that one game that we just backed from Sandy Hyperspace. Yeah, yeah, that one's Hyper like Force. a 4X game and stuff like that. 4X games are just going to take usually much longer because you're just doing a lot more s yeah. stuff in them because well, you're having to explore the map. Then you're having to move your people out and expand with that, and you're trying to conquer things. That was part of why we backed Hyperforce, though, because if I remember, you hyperspace, do a yeah, you do a lot of. Oh, your it's all real time. A lot of your well, as far as deciding what your actions are, that happens in real time, right. so it cuts down on tur Guys, turns. Guys, so is it just me, or have there been like a ton of freaking space games lately? Like There's just a, a ton of space games. I'm like, and I love space games, so like I want to back all of them. See, Kabuki Kid has a right. Explore, exploit, expand, exterminate. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I think that's what I said. I you get your expand? Daleks in there. <laughs> it's fine. Exterminate. <laughs> I'm already back. So Magenta exfoliate, says. Exfoliate, exfoliate. They're already backing Mothership, so they're going to have to pass yep, on this one yep. here. We did the hyper. Space. Yep, and we did hyperspace and everything. I feel like it's just a lot of space games, and they're all that expand and, like, sort of conquer. You know, they're all, like, a 4X-style game lately. Yeah. And this one's $100, guys. So, like, this is tough because I like the look of this, and I believe we saw this at Dice Tower, but we – I got to see it, and then we had to walk past it like yeah. we were doing something because I noticed the ships because they're all up on, like, these little standees and stuff like that. Like, they're floating, which I thought was really cool. And Jason says the Silver River one is going on, too. That's another 4X game. Oh, uh, okay, okay. It's, it's just it's just well. a lot right now. So, so what's unique about this one – sorry, I hope I'm ahead, not taking your steam. What I was surprised about is that it doesn't have a lot of reviews. It's got just Dice Tower. So you're going off of just Tom, Sam, right. and Healy. Which is fine, but if they're not your favorite reviewers, then you know you're not going to really take their word for a lot of things. Right. They gave. It, they say they like it more than Twilight Imperium, which is interesting. I don't see how that's possible. There's well, not many games that like are as good as that. Less time, but maybe. So they say they like it more than that. That's their only real reviews on it. Is like I said, Dice Tower, and then it's actually not funded yet. It still has like 14 days, but this one is not funded. Yeah, guys. If you go to Board Game Geek on this, I should have pulled it up. This has like a five point something rating. It's not a high super rating on this. For the, for the and I think there's – well, no, no, no. I'm saying or reviews people or people that have, have looked at it and stuff like that that have left. And I think there was five of them last time I checked. Which five is not a huge sampling of people. It doesn't instill a lot of, like, excitement in me, though, for this. This does yeah. not make me want to put on my space pants. It does not. Yeah, And I do space like wearing pants. the space pants. I do. Like, you know, I thought I should have worn space pants right now. Dang it. You should have worn pants. Dang it. Well, you don't have to wear pants when you're <laughs> recording from here up. <laughs> the only thing I'm really sad about is the fact that these ships look amazing, and I love the fact that they are on – the standees, like an X-Wing style okay. spaceship here. Like, you know, because it gives like that sort of thematicness to it and stuff. I agree. You know, like. That does make it nice because it seems like I it's like actually I like that flying. portion. And it's easier to move them around too than when they're just like on the board. There's a lot of things I do like about this. I like the fact that it has the modular sort of thing. But after backing hyperspace and stuff, I'm like, God, guys, I don't know. Like, 
Uh, I'd not pay attention to reviews prior to release. That's interesting. Okay, why is that, Jason? Let us know in the comments here. High ratings on previews is meaningless. Low ratings, beware, right? Yeah, you know, we always try to leave, like, a review that, like, we don't like talking bad necessarily about games, but if the game is not for us or we don't think that it suits a certain group of people, we will definitely tell you. Like, like with the one that we had just talked about, uh, the Life Layways Siphon. game. Yeah, Life Siphon. Like, that for a gamer just does not look super appealing because of those mechanics. If we figure out later on, oh, this is an amazing game, like, we'll, we'll tell you, but, like, we're not going to... But we're never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying we're never going to be like, yeah, this game is amazing, like, no, when yeah, it's, not like, not. Smoke. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to hype a game that we don't think is a hypeable game, like... Right. So... Case in point, this game, if you like 4X games, is probably going to be something you will enjoy. Um, you want to do, of course, your own research on it and everything else, but I could see a lot of people enjoying this one. The red flags for me are the fact that it only has just that Dice Tower preview. There's not a bunch of different voices all saying what they like about it, which I really like to see a bunch of different voices because people have different ideas about things. Right. It's not, And it's not funded yet. So those are the two major things for me. The thing that makes me not want to back it is the fact that I literally just had to pick races for hyperspace. Yeah. Like yesterday. So that's fresh in my mind going, oh, yeah, that's right. We just kickstarted a $100 space explore Which exploration. Which might game. be just incredibly bad timing for them, you know? And, and that was Sandy Peterson, like Cthulhu Wars the and all that. The big thing so. for me on this, too, was if we saw this at Dice Tower, which I believe we did walk past it, like why weren't they there promoting it where we could play it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they were. Because I would have played play this, it. you know. Like, we tried it every time we go to a convention. I mean, like, we're going to do folding space and stuff like that uh, yeah. at Arizona Game Fair and everything. So, like, when we go to conventions, guys, we are playing Kickstarter games. Definitely try like, to. Like, as many games that are on Kickstarter as possible or that are going to go to Kickstarter or that, you know, in are those prototype games and stuff like that. Like... Okay, so what Javier is saying is that the game is not out, so the low ratings are meaningless because he's saying that they're mostly due to the artwork. Oh, so if okay, the okay. If the, review, if the ratings are just on the artwork, yeah, that kind of sucks because everyone's arts, you know, what they like is going to be different. Some people still want cubes. They don't even want ships. They just want cubes. So everyone is definitely different. Like if you like 4X games and you don't have one like this that kind of fits or if you're looking for another one or your group really likes these games and you want to have one of your own. Look at those standees, guys. Definitely Look something it. worth looking into. No, I think so too. But so just, it's going to be a pass for me personally. I know Greg would be a pass. Yeah, Greg, Greg would be a pass because he's not he into those sort of games. games. Yeah, and plus it's out of his, his pricing. He doesn't like backing things, usually over 100 Um, It has to be really, really good for him to do that. Like yeah, it has like to be out of this world. Yeah. Right. With this one here, I think the timing of it for us with already having done hyperspace and stuff and like just that. just being reminded of it. That's the whole beauty of Kickstarter is that you can forget about right. it and buy another game. And then you get them within three months of each other and you go, oh, crap. Oh, crap. I just bought a 4X space game. Like, <laughs> But I just got <laughs> reminded about it. I was just re-looking at the campaign to pick out the different the different races that, that we wanted to play. I think this looks amazing. I think that they have a ton of stuff put into this. Like, the models look amazing. Like, I like the art in the game. I think the art looks good. Like, it's not probably the best space art I've ever seen, but it's not bad. Like, I love all the little planets and, like, tiles and stuff in it. And overall, guys, they have made other very accomplished previous series Exodus games. Like, yeah. if you look at all the reviews and stuff of the other Exodus games, like, those are really fantastic games, you know? So this one, I think I would be more willing to back if we hadn't have just gotten that other space game. Right, so that's just our personal Because it looks fantastic. We really like, so with the minis games. and stuff like that, you know? I don't know. I don't know if this is the perfect Forex game to jump in for a new player, and that's only because yeah. I haven't played it, so I can't recommend Absolutely, it as Alan. a good one to jump into. I can recommend something like Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea because I've played it. I know lots of people who have backed the Kickstarter and play it constantly. Well, no, any 4X game, I don't well, think. There's, well, there's, he's saying for a 4X game. He wants to play oh, a just, 4X game. Oh, just, okay, so as a gamer going into a 4X yes. game. Okay, got it. Yeah, then maybe something like that. Um, honestly, Alan, if you can go to conventions and stuff like that, I would hunt that stuff down at a convention and see if you even like that style of game because a lot of 4X games are going to be 
more expensive because they're going to have a lot more components and pieces in them. And then they're going to play longer. So if you don't like really long play times and stuff like that, that's going to be an issue. So going into that 4X sort of area, I mean, a lot of people either like it or they don't, you know, and I would hate for somebody to go into it and go, all right, I'm going to get this $120 game or $150 game or whatever it is. And then be like, this sucks. I don't want to take five hours to play this game. Like, right. it's it's almost like a war gaming sort of thing. Like, you don't get into war games just by playing board games. Like, you have to like that style of game. And it's, it's, a, it's a completely different monster than right. regular board games usually. You know, it's more historical. The people that you're going to be playing with are different. You can live like, a very happy gamer lifestyle just getting games from Target. Well, absolutely. And never really breaching into, like, the world of Kickstarter or – the new hotness games, or, I mean, there's lots of games th for everybody. 4X games are just its own special thing. Right. So, for example, like, I enjoy 4X games a lot because I enjoy longer games. I enjoy that advanced planning. Dr. Glory Hog, that's a long time for him to, like, be sitting there and stuff. He yeah, does so not really enjoy good. sitting and playing a game for four hours. Like, he just doesn't. Right. So, I mean, you guys, you guys got to kind of, Figure that out. And the best place to do that is at a convention if you're going to go ahead and sign up for games and play games and, and do that sort of thing, you know? Like, it's a good way to discover what you like most about different games, you know? You get, there's, there's a lot of conventions out there now. Especially if you live on the East Coast, guys. Like, East Coast people have it lucky. They have so many conventions over there. <laughs> Did you want to talk real briefly about Dino? Oh, oh, about Dino's Not Assembled? I don't have anything pulled up for them. That's fine. Let's All right. talk about it. I thought we were going to talk about Overpowered. Okay, talk about Overpowered. All right, guys. So I don't know if you guys saw the – well, hold on. Let me type it in. You talk about Overpowered. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So Overpowered is doing play mats. We've got one of them. Our stuff is currently on one. So you can just see just the tip. All right. <laughs> and uh, she did a video for it if you want to know more about it. Uh, the video that she did is pretty ridiculous. It was a ridic It was ridiculously fun to record. It was so funny. Well, for me, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but if you guys are interested in custom playmats, the playmats on these ones here are super crazy quality. I like that you can get them cut for any table. That's, that's a that big was huge for game. us. Yeah, because we don't game on normal size tables usually. No. You know? Not always. And, like... A game in the bathtub, a game in the garage. The huge attic. thing for me was, like, the nail thing. Like, I love playing on game mats here because, like, I can grab all of my stuff off of there. And I was just surprised at having a Kickstarter with a custom play mat and stuff like that at such a premium quality. Like, it's... You play Magic... A lot of Magic the Gathering. You also love play mats a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Is... For me, like, this is the best playmat I've seen. Like, if I had stitching on this, this would be, like, the most high-quality playmat I've ever played on, I think. Because it's definitely up there. I've, I've researched a lot of different playmats. The, the only thing I would say that's comparable are maybe some of the, ulti the Ultimate Guard ones, but those are a different beast. They're just a different kind of route because they have really unique things like the temperature one where you put your hand okay. and it shows your print, like the temperature. Okay, that makes and sense. And they've got different, like, dragon scale ones. So it's just different materials. They've got matte kind of ones that are unique and almost kind of like fuzzy and stuff. So they've got a lot of different ones. Right. So that's all they do, and they're pretty well established. But as far as a play mat goes and for the size and thickness, and then we even just got a prototype. Like, they're even thicker. When yeah, you thicker than them. the one that we had, which if you look in the video and stuff, you can see me comparing the thickness of, like, a it's very, th like. It's thicker than the Ink Geeked one or the Inked Gaming ones. Right. It's thicker than the Ultra Pro ones, which is usually, like, probably the most prolific Right, that makers, you end up seeing pro. a lot, yeah. Yeah, they make all your your Magic the Gathering. I ones. was super pleased with it, guys. So, like, if you are interested in playmats, I don't know if you guys are, like, I would at least check them out and see what they have to offer. Yeah. And they'll print anything on there. Especially if you have a unique gaming table, like a round table or something. That's Yeah, that's and that was a big thing for us. Like, we're even, we're going to end up switching tables, and I'm going to get a different, really oddly sized table. So, like, yeah, we might yeah it's going to, it's inevitable. It's going to get funky. Yeah, it's inevitable. And what was the other one you want to talk about? Dino's, oh, Dino's not, assembled. not Assembled. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, that's uh, Bebo's thing on it. I think they go through the game here, though. There we go. So Dino's Not Assembled. We play this at Dice Tower West. Right. It's 100% a light family game. Yes. Okay, so this here, if you guys have kids at home, this is the sort of game that you're going to want to get your kids, okay? To, to kind of introduce to the games if they don't play a bunch. Right, exactly, because 
they're going to be learning cool dinosaur names, okay? And they're actually going to put, like, the pronunciation underneath those dinosaur names. The dinosaur swords are cute looking. They have funny, like, little things that happen, like the Tyrannosaurus Rex loves glitter and stuff like this. Yeah. Like, really cute little stuff on the bottom. They have uh, the little meeples that are going to be matching. And then this is all about archaeology, guys. So, like, they're going to be collecting bones. Right. They either get two bones from the center or they can take a bone from somebody else and then lock it. Right. And if it's locked, it can't be taken. And right. you're basically just trying to dig up and get these dinosaurs put together and then put them in the museum. Yeah, and put them in a museum. The most of the museum, for the fastest yeah. wins. And it was a short game. So – being a parent who has board gaming kids at home, you want to play something that they're interested in that you will also not hate while you're playing it, guys. Because right. if your kid wants to play it, you're going to play it at least a thousand times, okay? Like, yeah, this has to be 30 minutes or less. Your I'd kid imagine. has no limit to what they watch or play in a row like that many times. Like, so. This one was very nice to play. It's good to have a hard cutoff where you say, okay, well, we played it. Now let's play a different game. Right. This one was this one was very cute. Like, I thought if you have gaming kids at home, this is a really good one to play. If they are an advanced gamer, I think that they might end up getting maybe a little bored with it, though. You know? Mm, like, maybe. it's in that range of, like. I would almost say six yeah. and younger. Oh, really? Six and younger? Yeah. I eight think that. Eight and younger. Depends I was going to say, games. I think, like. Maybe like eight, nine would be maybe that where you're getting towards the cutoff age on that, you know? Yeah, like that's definitely, I would say eight is the top end right. of this game. And that's but definitely that and under. And you could even probably do like even younger. Like I know we started teaching our kid games at like two. Yeah. And that would be perfect because they're big tiles like and everything. King of Tokyo at two and stuff like that. So she she probably would not enjoy this particular game because she's already played stuff like Ganymede with us. Right. And she Our played kid plays too many larger games to probably enjoy this to its fullest extent. She might think it was really cute and stuff. She but might want to play with the meeples. But, yeah, she would also maybe get a little bored. But it's a good family weight game. But, yeah, Especially exactly. Especially if you've got a bunch of little ones in various age groups. They exactly. They should all be able to play it and be on the same footing. Right. And it's it's interesting. Anna's learning. They're learning stuff and everything, right? There's no good runaway And although you, are, you can steal a tile, I do like the fact that once it's stolen once, you flip the tile and then nobody can steal it again because you don't get super grabby or fighting right over one. it limits the amount of like that happening in the game which can it can upset kids if yeah. there's too much of it in there because then they feel like they're being picked on or something like that or somebody gets hurt feelings but definitely a game that you could give your kid teach them how to play it and then they could go play with their friends like it would be super simple for them to learn it and then go with their friends and play that game so mm -hmm. all right that is all of the Kickstarters that we have for today, That's guys. That's all of them. There are no other Kickstarters. Well, I mean, there's other Kickstarters, but not any ones that we're going to talk about today. So if any of you guys are going out to Game Fair, make sure to come up and say hi to, hi to, say hi to us. I got to meet a bunch of cool people yesterday and everything. That was fun. We'll be there all weekend. I'm going to be doing a Secret Lives, what's the Secret Lives of Reviewers board game panel tonight and stuff like that, which... I was hoping to record, but I don't think it's going to happen because Dr. Glory Hogg has to do this thing yeah, called work. Yeah, I'll still be at work by the time yeah. it's actually going on, so yeah. that'll be kind of difficult. And it's because everyone who was asking, this is our replacement for Greg. It's just <laughs> That's it? That's that's all they get? That's good. <laughs> it does about as much as he does, honestly. What was, what was your favorite game that you had played, or the, your favorite game that you had seen this week? Oh, Crave. Crave? Sure. Yeah, I want Crave. Mine was Fuji Koro, guys. Like, I really thought Fuji Koro was excellent looking. Let's see. Here. Oh, so Alan was looking at Plunder Bund Area 1851 we'll Express. We'll definitely be talking about Area 1851 Express because we Garden, played that one in Dice Tower West. Garden. Oh, Garten Brow. Garten Brow? Yeah, so like the Brown Garden, Freshwater, Fly, Oceans, and Widget Ridge. There's a lot. There's, There's yeah, like. The closer we get to Origins and stuff like that, the more and more ramping up you guys are going to see with people bringing stuff out. And, like, there's going to be crazy releases before that and after. It's it's going to get crazy. We did get to play Area 1851, though, and we will probably end up talking about that next Which, week, yeah. I think. Oh, and, guys, so next week, since I will be at FNORDCON, we're actually going to do a recorded show. But, but... 
You're going to do what with I'm gonna it? I'm going to try to do a watch party so that we c- yeah. I can still comment live and everything. Because she should be probably on the plane. I that think point. that's really cool, though. If you do a watch party and stuff like that, and if I am off the plane, like, I'll try to comment as well. But you guys will get to hang out with Dr. Glory Hog still and then oh watch yeah. our, our previews and stuff for we this. We talk so much and crap our reviews. about Greg and her. <laughs> oh, so much man. Crap. She won't be able to respond. <laughs> she won't have internet access. We could talk. Thanks so for that. Crap. Thanks if for that. If you guys that. want, I'll do an AMA <laughs> where you can ask me anything about Gorehound, and I'll just tell you. What? 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 That doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> Don't go to Nordcon without me. I guess it serves me right. I p- we pick on everybody else that ends up not joining the, yeah. <laughs> the stream. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. After FNORDCon and stuff like that, we will resume, you know, our live shows as scheduled. Uh, but we are, you know, like I'm doing Origins this year. I'm doing Gen Con this year. What else did we have? We're thinking about doing PAX Unplugged and stuff like that. So yeah. during those times, we will have to e- either record early or pause the show at some point. But yeah. for the mar- most part, you know, thanks, thanks for showing up, guys, and commenting and showing us what you guys liked and stuff like that. We always enjoy that. Don't like, forget a to ton. follow Greg at Hooked on Geek. That's right. Make sure he gets some love, even though he wasn't here today. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy Thank you, your Magenta. Lunch, slash dinner, That's slash right. Three o'clock chocolate. Who slash knows? Whatever it is you're right? doing. Right. Your snack time. Special snack, snack time. time. <laughs> All right. And then we will see you guys later. And stay tuned for our coverage from Arizona Game Fair because I will be posting stuff on that. Okay, guys? So thank you so much for watching.